Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about my top three areas that you need to pay attention to if you are planning in the middle of, or more especially, when you have completed your very first taxonomy or knowledge graph project. Now, if you didn't catch that video, boop, there it is, it's up above. Taxonomies and knowledge graphs have a lot in common, so these buckets of things that you need to pay attention to are applicable to both. And honestly, it's just good data practice. So anything in the data world probably could benefit from these things as well. Now, one thing I want to preface this by is there are some big platforms out there for data governance, something like data.world. Again, boop, there's another video up there if you want to check them out. But this is really just talking about what you can do for your little neck of the woods if or if you don't have one of those big, kind of expensive platforms. <laughs> so if this sounds interesting to you, if you just need to understand, now I have this beautiful creation, now what do I do with it? This is a video for you, so keep on watching. All right, so number one is documentation. If you did not keep documentation as you were developing your taxonomy or knowledge graph, you probably need to do that very quickly, right after you are done. Uh, you really should do it while you're doing it though. And some of the things you need to consider, there are a lot of things to consider, but here are some of my top picks. So first you need to understand who was involved and who did what. So usually people think this is just the people creating the taxonomy or creating the knowledge graph, but really it's, did you have somebody in sales helping you? Did you have a marketer that was marketing whatever you were doing? Did you have uh, a BI consultant? Did you have external resources that you were uh, paying or consulting with? All of those things need to be documented so you kind of know who was doing what. Uh, and this also ties into another thing that you really need to be careful of and that is security and access. Who had access and who should continue to have access? And is there any security concerns with what you did? These are things that tie into the second thing in this bucket, which is which tools, which algorithms, uh, which scripts, which data sources did you use while creating this thing? And more importantly, the versions of these things and where did you get them from? So if you are using versions of libraries that are outdated and you never look at them again, they can be a security concern. If you are using a script that was calling a certain database that maybe gets moved to the cloud or doesn't exist, or you don't have rights to it anymore, those are things you need to make sure are documented. So you know, first of all, how to fix something if it happens. And second of all, you might need to remind yourself someday how you actually develop this thing. <laughs> This happens a lot. You get done with a project and you move on and then maybe someday you are called upon to fix it or update it uh, and you don't have any clue on how you did it. Overall, even if it's not you going back and looking at it, you need to think of reproducibility. How much do I need to document so that someone has a clue on how I actually did what I did? Following that is when was it created? And a lot of people know the whole data set when the whole data set was created, the whole platform or whatever it is that you're working on. But I would also say that individual nodes, individual assets or individual taxonomy terms, those also need to have a provenance or a date or a version because we're gonna get into this in my second bucket, which is maintenance schedules. Some things need to be maintained a lot more frequently than others. And having a, when was this last touched? is probably a good start to having a good maintenance schedule. The next aspect is looking at the bookends of your project. So which data sources did you actually use? If they're external, you really wanna be careful. Where did it come from? When was it last updated? Because if the data you use was already two years out of date, what's that mean for your data? I always use the two year time frame. And did they have certain rights and access? You know, you wanna make sure if you're using external data sources that you understand and have a copy of what the copyright or uh, usage is documented as because it can change and you don't wanna get in trouble for using data that you shouldn't be using. 
The other thing is with internal data, they can, it can move. When was it last updated? Do you actually understand when they say customer, do they mean the same thing as you when you mean customer? Those kinds of things are all imperative to understand because that's what all of your beautiful creation is foundational on, is that data. What is it? Where did it come from? And is it trustworthy? That's another thing you have to consider when you're looking at when was it last updated and who created it. Because if they're not trustworthy or something comes out in the news that they're not trustworthy, you wanna make sure that you can grab that data and get rid of it. That's why making sure you always have some data telling you where it came from and when was it last touched or updated is very important. And the other side of your bookend is your consumers. First, you wanna make sure you know your consumers because they are probably your business value. <laughs> they're, they're probably using your data for some business value of some sort and you need to make sure you understand that. And the other thing is if you're out of sync with them, if your update schedule is not matching theirs, then your data could be outdated and they could be getting bad results from that because they don't know. So you always wanna make sure you're in lockstep with whoever is using your data as well. Another aspect in this same bucket is a little harder to nail down because there are so many split decisions that are made on a project. But if you can document the big decisions, why did you do what you did? Maybe there was really good business context. Maybe there is some weird thing in a dependent system that made you make that decision. What if that system gets updated? What if that blocker is no longer a blocker? It's probably good to know that you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? So making sure you understand when those decisions are being made, who made them and why they were made is also really important. Don't go crazy with this. You don't have to document every decision. Uh, but when you're dealing with any modeling decisions or business decisions, those are usually, or things that really change the scope of what you're doing, those are good to document. Now, how do you maintain all of this? <laughs> this is an imperative question for anybody. You don't want to create something and then it falls over in a sh few short months or years after you've created it. You probably should be looking at it more than once a year though. That is for sure. So this is where that maintenance schedule comes in. And you need to develop this on your business needs. If you have certain data that people are constantly looking at, that data should probably be on a, a more rigorous update schedule. Whereas if you have data that's maybe consulted once a year, it's okay if you don't look at it all the time. And those are data sets. But let's talk about taxonomy terms and individual nodes in your graph. That is a secret of mine is I actually look at that level because if you have to look at your entire data set every single week, for instance, you need to really feel confident that every piece of data is actually needed to be analyzed in that situation. Whereas if you're looking at something once a year, maybe it's not that important. So this whole you know granularity of update is again, business focused. So keep that in mind. But what I do is if I'm looking at a taxonomy term or a knowledge graph node and, you know, maybe Nike. Nike has been Nike for a very long time. So if that's a node in my knowledge graph, I probably don't need to update the entity of Nike very often. Uh, same with the taxonomy term for like diesel engines. They've kind of been the same for a very long time, so I don't need to maybe update that on a regular basis. But you do want to have some touch point on all of your data at least once a year, so make sure that that is built into your schedule. But for something that is constantly being updated or something that is constantly changing the context of, so, you know, things that are high tech, you know, what, what does artificial intelligence mean today? What did it mean yesterday? Those are things you probably want to update on a more regular basis. As well as, and this is the other point, is what are your users actually using? So there's the business context as to what needs to be done and what is um, just logically being updated quite a bit because the context, but then that's also what are your users using? The things that aren't getting updated too often may affect when your users are actually using it. So keep that in mind. You wanna make sure you talk to your users to understand if when something is updated, it's going to trigger them to look at it or not. The other thing is how far back in time do you go? So uh, most of the time I, don't, I, I do use the two year rule quite a bit. 
So if something hasn't been updated in two years, it doesn't mean it's not important. It means that it's settled. Whatever the metadata is on that, whatever things that are on it are settled. And it's almost like you have to put a seal of approval on that to say that this doesn't need to be updated again and it's going to regularly be looked at once a year, but it doesn't necessarily need to get updated once a year. So you wanna make sure that you have some kind of threshold in your mind for your business and for your data. What is going to make sense for how far back do you look for behavior of usage and that sort of thing? As well as if you are updating things, how far back do you go? If you are re-indexing something, how far back do you go? Do you have to re-index everything? That's gonna take a long time. That's why UIDs are important, by the way. Link up above if you don't know what that is. But this is something that you still have to look at from a perspective of what is going to be meaningful to my business to be able to update it. The other thing, and this is really important from a label and a relationship perspective, is when you relate two things together, you are taking a snapshot in time. Same with labels of nodes or taxonomy terms. Those labels and those relationships might not be relevant anymore. They might be outdated or they might be a little on the offensive side, or maybe they just don't represent the way that things are being represented today that might have been okay back then, but not so much now. So you really need to make sure that you are doing a sensitivity check, a relevancy check, and a currency check. So is this currently the way that that thing is described in the world? Is there any sensitivities or things that you need to be careful of on how you are representing something? Or is this relevant to your, to your users and your data? Sometimes in a point in time, something is really important to you. Maybe uh, knowing mortgage conversions are super important to you uh, five years ago. Maybe you have moved on to different projects. Maybe your business models have changed. Maybe you don't really need to know that so much anymore. So making sure that you are constantly looking at that from the three perspectives is incredibly important. And it leads us to our final bucket of things, which is how do you measure all of this? So again, there are a lot of things like Tableau and you can do this in Excel. I wouldn't accept, I'd really recommend that, but there's a lot of ways to add business intelligence on top of the data that you have. But the three main things that I would strongly suggest. So first, you need to understand how much does it cost you to create from, from scratch and to maintain one unit of measure. So what does that mean? So in a taxonomy, your unit of measure would be your taxonomy term, your actual taxonomy term. In a knowledge graph, it would be your node or your class, your, your concept. So how much money does it take? How much time, how, what, how much resources does it take to create that thing from scratch and then connect it to all the things that need to be connected so that it can be used? Same with maintenance, right? This is really important and it's an aspect a lot of people forget about. In data science, we want more and more data. We just want more data, more data, more data. After you get to so much data, you can't maintain it very well. And that doesn't mean you just flush all your data. What it means is you need to be very intentional with what data you are paying attention to always and what can be either sunset or only checked in on, on a once a year basis. So I have a whole series of things that I do for what I call... Um, the value of a concept, uh, and that would be for taxonomy or knowledge graph. If you're interested in that video, uh, leave a comment down below. But basically you're looking at how beneficial is it from my business perspective? How beneficial is this from my usage perspective? And that final part that we just talked about is how much does it cost for me to maintain this? Do I actually get my money's worth out of whatever I'm maintaining or creating? So with those three big buckets of things, uh, hopefully you can avoid some disasters uh, or at least feel a little bit more confident in the beautiful creation that you have made. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.